Hey, this is Charles with Rocky Mountain ATV MC, and you're watching part one of our Razor XP1000 engine rebuilding series. This machine right here is a 2014 Razor XP1000. We have just over 8,000 miles on it, so we're due for a top end rebuild. Now, if you're not sure if you're at this point on your machine, if you have a lot of hours on it like ours or if you have blue smoke coming from the exhaust maybe you have excessive engine noise or the machine is hard to start or has a rough idle these are all indicators of worn out engine components now another thing that can happen is part failure so if you had something that failed inside the engine then you want to keep that in mind as you go through the process and that way you can find out what caused it and make the appropriate repairs now, a good way to verify that your top end is bad is by doing a cylinder leak down test. And to check bottom end components, you can actually do an oil pressure test. And we have videos on both of those things. So be sure to check that out. And if you do need to do a top end on your razor, this is a lot of work. You're gonna have to pull the engine. And because of that, you wanna make sure that you're correct in doing your diagnostic procedures. So uh, once you know you gotta go in here, the reason why you have to pull the engine is if you just pull the cylinders off, it's hard to get to that wrist pin. So everything has to come apart. And this process will be similar for all of the Razor XP1000s. Just be sure to refer to your model specific service manual for more information and specs. To do this job, we need some tools to help us remove the clutches. So uh, we've got our clutch puller, we've got a sheave spreader. This is our clutch cover removal tool and then we also have our clutch holding tool now we're also going to be using an engine hoist and an engine stand so this chain is for the hoist and then this adapter plate is for our engine stand we're also going to need rubber gloves safety glasses rags and other than that you're going to want to have some common hand tools and you want to stay organized throughout the process so we have some ziploc bags a sharpie to label things and then we also have masking tape. You can label things with that as well and the Sharpie. And then you also need an oil pan and we're gonna use a jack to raise the rear of the machine. Now, anytime you're doing an engine rebuild, you're gonna need some coolant. We have an oil change kit from Tusk. It includes the crush washer and oil filter. And then it's really just common service items. So the spark plugs, the air filter. And then we also have some contact cleaner that's always handy while you're going through the process. And then if you need any special tools or the engine parts, check out our website. We have a lot of different options on there. The first thing we need to do is start out with a clean machine. And since this is part one of our engine rebuild series, we're just focusing on removing the engine from the frame. So to do that, what we're gonna do is start out by removing our seats. And then we also need to remove some of the accessories from the rear of the machine since all of this body work needs to come off to gain access to the engine. Next, we'll remove our pre-filter covers. We're also gonna re remove our shock line covers and loosen up these clamps on the shock canister. Then we'll feed this down where this cover was. And when you fish this shock canister through, we need this out of the way. So I'm gonna route it all the way down by the skid plate. And the reason I'm setting it down here, we just don't want the canister hanging by this hose. And just be sure to repeat these steps on the other side. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is remove the rear portion of this roll cage off. And to do that, we're actually gonna be removing the doors and then we also have the stock seat belts on. We'll take those off, remove the hardware from this rear portion of the roll cage. And it's a good idea to have a friend help you out and lift this rear portion off. Now for this last section of the roll cage that we're removing, I removed the top bolts out of this roof so we can lift it up and that's gonna help us remove it. Now that we have the rear portion of the roll cage removed, what you're gonna to wanna to do is check your cargo bed for any brackets that we're holding any accessories in and any wires, get those removed. And then once you've done that, the cargo bed, to get this out, we have 17 bolts in the back. They're Torx head bolts, we'll remove those. And then you have a plastic clip on each side of your fender remove both of those seven bolts on the front of the cargo bed. And then after that, you can pull the fenders out just a little bit. There's some clips in the side that go in the bed. And to successfully remove this bed, you have four trim clips on that front. You also have three hoses in this bed. 
We need to disconnect them, and then you also have some wiring going to the tail lights. You'll need to disconnect that to pull the bed out. It's helpful to have a friend there with you to remove that. After that, we're gonna disconnect the negative battery cable. After that, we'll drain the oil. Once it's drained, we'll reinstall the drain plug. The next thing we need to do is remove our air intake ducting and our air boxes. We'll completely remove the bolt holding this clamp on. Then we'll remove this other bolt holding our intake duct on. And once that's loose, I'm gonna remove this intake boot right here. And then we'll move to the front of the air box and remove the two bolts. And we'll remove the air box assembly. And we're also gonna to wanna to come back down here by the clutch cover and loosen this hose clamp. This one holds on our breather tube and we'll remove that from our air intake duct assembly. And last, we'll remove the remaining tubes that go down to our clutch. Now we can remove these two heat shields. After that, we're gonna remove the ignition coil. Then we can take out the bolts from the two crossbars and remove the crossbars. All right, at this point, we need to gain access to our clutches. So to do that, I'm gonna remove the rear wheel, we'll remove this lower shock mounting bolt, and then we'll remove the clutch cover. The next thing we need to do is remove our belt. So we have our clutch sheave spreading tool. We'll put this into place and we'll walk the belt off. If you're gonna reuse this belt, you wanna note the orientation. So our belt, the way it was installed was so that we can read Polaris on it. So we'll just install it that same way when we go back together. Now on these clutches, we have a little bit of dirt on here and clutch dust. So what we wanna do is clean them out really well, and that way, when we go back together, everything's gonna to be nice and clean. Next thing we're gonna do is remove this mounting bolt for the driven clutch. All right, with that bolt out, we can now remove the clutch. After that, we're gonna remove the drive clutch. So to do that, I have a clutch holding tool, and then this one takes a 21 millimeter socket, and we'll loosen that bolt up. After that, we can take our clutch puller and I'm gonna apply a little bit of grease to these threads. And then when you install this, you're gonna use the clutch holding tool again and tighten this down until you hear the clutch pop off or you'll see it pop off and then we'll remove the clutch. So this one actually didn't pop, but a lot of times they'll make a popping sound. So we'll go ahead and slide that off. Next thing we'll do is remove this inner clutch cover. And to do that, we have seven bolts, three around each shaft, and then one down here. Next thing we're gonna do, we have four clips holding our wire harness to this air boot right here. So we're gonna disconnect all four of those. Then we have this bolt in the bottom of the air box that we need to remove. I'm just using a socket on the other side of it. So the next thing we need to do is loosen both of the hose clamps that are right on the back of the throttle bodies, and then we can remove this air box. All right, at this point, we can start disconnecting all of our electrical connectors, and it might be helpful to label these. You can use some masking tape and your Sharpie. So this one is the T-map, We'll disconnect that from our throttle body. 
So up here on the throttle bodies, we have two fuel injectors. We'll disconnect both of those. And then we have one more connector on the passenger side of the throttle bodies. Once they're disconnected, we'll move down and we'll disconnect the crankshaft position sensor. Back over on the driver's side, we're going to unplug the engine coolant temp sensor. Next, we'll remove the fuel line. And after that, we can remove the throttle body assemblies and we'll just loosen the two clamps that are holding them onto the intake boots. After that, we need to remove the battery cables that are coming down to our starter. All right, so now we're gonna disconnect our spark plug wires. So this one, this is labeled PTO. The other one is labeled MAG. And you need to remember this throughout the process because we'll be referring it to it throughout the entire process. And we'll take these out. And what PTO means is power takeoff side, so that's your clutch side. MAG is magneto or the side of your stator. And we'll set all this down right onto our skid plate. Next, we'll remove these two exhaust springs holding the head pipe to the muffler. And then after that, we'll remove the six bolts that hold the header to the cylinder head. Now with all the bolts out, we'll remove the head pipe. Now we're gonna disconnect our stator wires. And then we have this hose clamp right here. We're gonna remove this breather tube. All right, now we're gonna drain our coolant. So to do that, we're gonna remove this hood. Then we can remove our radiator cap. Next, we need to disconnect this hose from the thermostat. And we've got a drain pan underneath. We're gonna drain all that coolant into it. Next, we'll remove our cooling hose from the water pump and finish draining the coolant. We didn't use a funnel, but if you do, it can help prevent the coolant from making a mess. All right, so at this point, we're gonna start loosening our motor mounts. So uh, this one on the back passenger side, we're gonna loosen these two bolts. We don't need to remove them all the way. And then the two bolts on the back, we will remove all the way. All right, so this bolt on bottom, it doesn't want to back out, so it might be dirty or whatever. So we need to take a better look at it once the motor's out. So we're actually going to take these two side bolts out. But if you have to do this on yours, there is a bracket on the other side of the transmission that when you take these bolts out, it's going to drop down. On the driver's side, we have the SDI motor mounting plate, and it has some set screws. We need to back those off before we remove these four bolts. All right, the next thing we need to do is reconnect our rear shock. Now, once we've tightened this bolt down, we can reinstall our wheel and torque those bolts down as well. Once you have your lug nuts tightened up, we're gonna lower the machine. We'll do the final tightening once the wheel's actually on the ground. All right, so at this point, we're gonna take our chain and we're gonna hook it to the exhaust flange right here. And we're gonna use two bolts on each side to support this thing. So on this top bolt, I am using a washer just to keep the bolt from going through the chain. And just for insurance, I'm putting this bolt in at the bottom. All right, and the next thing I'm gonna do is take our shock canister, and I wanna get this out of the way just so we don't damage this line when we pull the engine out. And we have those zip ties in our parts shot. All right, so I've gone ahead and rolled the engine hoist into place. I'm gonna put this chain on it, and we're just gonna adjust it just so there's a little bit of slack in the chain still, and then we're gonna start removing our motor mounts. Now for this top bolt, 
I'm going to leave it in place to help support the engine and then we'll move to the other side and do the same steps. Now that we have those motor mounts pulled out, we can start raising this engine out of the machine. And while we do this, you wanna make sure you guide it out of place and that nothing is hanging up. If it is, stop and you'll have to take care of that. And it can even be helpful to have a friend help you do this. All right, now that we have this engine pulled from our frame, we're gonna go ahead and lower this down and we're gonna get it ready to install onto our engine stand. All right, now that we have the engine pulled from the machine, we can get our adapter plate mounted up. So to do that, we're gonna pull the starter and our transmission adapter mount. And to get these transmission bolts removed, you might need a friend to help hold the motor while you loosen them up. Now this bracket might be stuck on there, so we're just gonna use a dead blow hammer to help knock it off. Next, we'll take the engine adapter plate and we're gonna put this bushing where the starter normally goes. And then we'll install the two mounting bolts. After that, we'll flip the motor around and we'll slide it into our engine stand. Make sure we put that locking pin in place and then we'll release the tension from our chain. And after that, we'll remove the chain. And that's everything you need to know to get your engine pulled from your Polaris Razor XP1000. Now, if you need any parts for your machine, check out our website. We have a lot of different options on there. This is the end of part one of our engine rebuild series. So be sure to join us for part two and we'll show you how to get this thing torn down. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more helpful content. Thanks for watching.